Hi, I'm Frank Reif from publicspace.net. Today I'm going to show you the various basic text manipulation features of a Bella Finder rename. Going straight into the tool, we can have a look at the Category pop-up button. Clicking on this, we can see that there are lots and lots of different categories. But in this particular tutorial, we will concentrate on the topmost, Text Category. Let's start by dragging in some files whose names we want to change. In the left column, we can see the current names, and in the right column, the new names as they will be after we complete the renaming operation. Right now, both names are the same, and we are on the Add Text to the Beginning action. As soon as we start typing something into the text field, this is reflected in the preview. Note that the new text is highlighted differently, and that all the names in the right column have gone from being grayed out to being black. This shows that they are now different from the current name, and that they will be renamed when we click on the Perform Renames button. If I delete the text, they go back to grey, showing that they don't need to be renamed anymore. Immediately below the Add Text to Beginning action is the Add Text to the End action, which does exactly that. It adds the text to the end. This is a good place to examine the effect of the change parameter, which nearly all actions feature. This allows us to tell the program which bit of the file name we want to change. The default setting is the file name without the extension. If you look at the change to column, you can see that we have a little bit at the end of the file names that's grayed out by default. This is the file extension. It begins with a period and is generally three or four letters long. This tells macOS what kind of data is inside of the file. A .txt file is a text file, a .jpeg file is a JPEG image file, and so on. In general, it is a bad idea to mess with this, as you might not be able to open a file anymore if the file extension is gone or has been changed. Sometimes novice users panic when they mistakenly delete a file extension and conclude that their files are now corrupted. The solution is simple. You just need to put the right file extension back to the end of the file name, and your files will once again open properly. This can of course be a pain if you don't remember what the file extension was, so it's best avoided altogether. There are, however, times when you really do want to change the file extension, so we are going to go through the various change options here. Observe what happens when I select the entire file name and the extension. Now the hello text is added after the file extension. If we change this, to the file extension with the separator. The display in the change to column changes and the entire file name before the dot is grayed out, showing us that the file name itself is not going to be changed. For this particular action, this makes no actual difference because we are adding at the end anyway. The final selection, the file name extension without the separator, is the same thing, but the separator, meaning the dot, is not included. 99% of the time, you'll want the save the file name without the extension setting. Moving down one action, we get to the insert in front of existing text action. This is an action that is a lot more discriminate and only changes the file names if the existing text is actually found in the file name. The existing text, for instance, can be just an underscore, but it could be a word, a phrase, or any string of characters. Note the tiny little blue arrow that appears in the current name column to show us which underscore was picked up. Of course, there might be several underscores in a file name, so we have this pop-up button here, where we can say things like the last underscore in the name. Finally, we put the text that we want to insert in the top text field. The next action is the same thing, but the new text will be placed after the existing text instead of in front of it. Let's insert ing after report. You can see that this works for two files that already contain the word report, but in one case report is capitalized and the other it is not. If we switch off ignore case, only the exact match will be taken into account. Insert that text position allows you to express things such as insert this text after the first or last four characters, for instance. We can use the stepper control to step through the positions and we can start from the start of the file name or the end. The next set of actions are all about removing parts of the file name. Remove from the beginning will remove a particular text only if it is at the front of the file name. 
Note that the matching text is crossed out in the current file name column. Remove text from the end does the same thing to text at the end of the file name, and the ignore case checkbox works just as expected. Remove text will remove text anywhere within the file name. You can use the pop-up button to remove only the first or the last occurrence, etc. We then move on to the actions that do the very same thing, but instead of removing a text altogether, they replace it with another string of characters. The remainder of the actions in this category are all about moving text from one place in the file name to another. This does not cover all eventualities, but if your particular use case falls within the scope of these actions, they are a lot easier to use than the more sophisticated actions, such as the regular expressions of the advanced and special category. So let's have a look at the first one, move text to front. This simply means that if a particular text string exists anywhere within the file name, it will be cut out of its current location and transplanted to the front. Move to end does the same thing, but moves the existing text to the end instead. Move text to position works a lot like the insert text at position action we've seen previously. And the move text in front of the existing text and move text after existing text work like the insert text in front of or after existing text. Now if you're new to about a find a rename, you may go, but how do I move multiple words? Or how do I replace multiple strings of characters? The answer is that you are not limited to a single renaming action at a time, but you can combine multiple actions. So for instance, you can first replace one word and then add a second action to replace a second word, etc. Please check out my how to combine rename actions video on this channel for more details. I hope you found this short overview of the text category to be useful. Please subscribe for more content and thank you for watching.